issues with that. There's, I think, which they're still having, they say, but. Yeah, I mean, because um, uh, I, I believe uh, but, uh, I believe the uh, makers of Skyrim, they they're mostly for um, Microsoft. Like they, they kind of originated from Microsoft's uh, console, and now they they're getting like Alicia said, yeah, she she figures that since the since uh you know the PlayStation Three never really had these type of games before, the Elder Scroll games now becoming a bit of trouble trying to put in all the DLC needed, but. Yeah, I mean, until they get those DLC problems uh, fixed, I, I think a, a lot of gamers with the PlayStation Three are gonna. Be yeah, a lot of you'll see mostly any uh, any site you go to, uh, if it's an article about like Skyrim dot uh, Skyrim DLC, uh, most uh, angry a lot of people, uh, most angry uh, people with PS Threes are basically upset. Like you'll see a lot of comments is what I saw earlier. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Ooh, um, remember uh, before we started on our uh, the breakdown show, I mentioned a possible rumor alert. Um, uh, uh, was it about like Wii U or something? Or... Oh, not exactly, but uh, to get the gist of it, uh, let me let's put it like this, folks. Um, I heard this rumor, and apparently it started around the summer, and I cannot confirm if this is legit or not. So far, it's all signs are looking at. No, but I thought I should bring this up just in case. Uh, so get this. I mean, everything was going okay. I was minding my own business, and I figured, oh, all is good. Until I see this online report that states that 2014, Sega might. Uh, the rumor oh, says oh, they, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, they, they might do a Sonic the Hedgehog franchise-wide reboot. So what that means is that almost any part of it, like the comic books or the video games, may become... They're going to start from scratch. Now, this isn't new because uh, in the comic books uh, with the likes of DC and Marvel, they have been doing their own restarts. For DC, they have their, they're have they putting most, if not all, of their issues back to zero, uh, to zero and reintroducing a lot of the heroes. And pretty soon Marvel is going to follow suit Although they're not gonna extinct, they're not gonna really go like, oh, this is issue zero. It's more like a, they're gonna try to do like a fresh start, out uh, while provide some explanation as to how they got to that fresh start. Mm. And DC, I, I believe DC also did that as well. But the point is, the comic book industry has been, you know, they're they're really really pushing forward with the reboots this year, and you know, most likely yeah, starting next year. Like Spider Man. Yeah, and Captain America and the Avengers. But also, um, it's no secret that some video games do reboots, like Tomb Raider, for example. Which is being rebooted in this uh, January. Like. Yeah, and it's also being developed by Square Enix. Uh, but, I mean, it's like, it's, it's no secret that a lot of these games and a lot of, you know, books, and even with movies, they get reboots. But the part that got to me with the uh, announcement of Sonic the Hedgehog was... First off, you know, I mean, it's interesting to know that they're going not just with video games, but maybe with comic books. Yes, people, there are comic books on the uh, based on the video games. But the really re interesting part about, I mean, the, well, actually, it's more weird to me because I've mentioned before, I've played like a few levels of Sonic Generations. And I haven't gotten to Sonic Colors. I've heard about, I want to get started on playing the game, but... I heard that as far as the story is concerned, it's not really, you know, compelling and stuff. It's fine and all, but I think I would agree with some people saying that if there's not much of a story to it, just, you know, put it down. However, the part that, uh, I figured with Sonic Generations, after playing a few levels, that, I mean, they even mentioned it themselves. They're fin they finally found the right track. And my opinion is whenever things get way too big and way too complicated, just trim the fat, and reduce it down to the basics. So that way, you know, we can just go back to having fun mm -hmm. with it. Like, why beat us over the head over extra stuff? I mean, I got nothing against the extra characters. I got nothing against without actually having a storyline. I love to have the storyline from Sonic Adventure 2. But I just think that there really needs to be a good focus with it. You know, you can't just think, oh, well, we'll just put it out there. Now, I'm just saying this as a fan, you know. I'm not trying to act like all business or anything. I'm just saying it as a fan, you know. Like, as someone that really was looking forward to this type of stuff, I just think that in some ways 
it didn't really work the way that they wanted and we wanted. I don't even think we had any, I'll admit, even I wasn't too sure exactly how it would go. And since there wasn't really much of a clear idea from both fans and from the developers, yeah. I'd say stick with that. But the idea of just starting from scratch, and I'll spend, especially the part where they say they want to make the franchise like uh, that new toy game hybrid called Skylanders. Yeah. I got nothing against that, uh, against Skylanders, but I just don't know about Sonic the Hedgehog, you know? I mean, to me, it's yeah. like, just stick Sonic with just one or two mediums, but don't try and push it for that far out to Too where... Far, yeah. I mean, it's like, let me put it like this. I don't. I have nothing against what Skylanders is doing, but I'm not too thrilled over the idea of having... A, a, my access to playing the video game is through an action figure. But, yeah, like I said, you know, I mean... To me, it's like it's the same complaint I could also make for Smash Brothers Brawl with their adventure mode. As much as I love the idea, and as much as I, you know, have a lot of respect for what they were doing with it, I personally felt that in some ways the storyline really needed to be simplified because, it, you know, it's like well, to be honest, they actually tried to make it simple. You know, you don't have dialogue; you just have heroes fighting bad guys. But then around the end of the game, it gets way too complex, and the fact that you don't have any dialogue, and they've even confessed that a lot of important parts of the storyline were cut from the official release. What the hell? Yeah, so I'm just, like I said, as a fan, I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to be that complex, and you're not going to make it clear to people the complex parts of these games, you might want to trim the fat and just keep it to the basics. I'm all for, you know, trying to add some extra stuff, but seriously, just... You know, if you if you have a very good idea of how to put it all together, that would be great. If not, then like I said, just keep it to the basics, and hopefully you can you know expand from there. But I can I got nothing against the idea of rebooting Sonic the Hedgehog in terms of like reintroducing the characters, because I mean we've gotten way too past. We got a lot of re reboots this recently, so. And plus, we like, you know, a lot of people. I hope like it's what they did like what uh, Mid uh, Midway did. I mean, uh, Warner Brothers do with Mortal Kombat. They yeah. introduced that to a new generation with the latest game, man. And I mean, plus the hardcore fans were really getting upset with how the recent games were kind of tame. You know, they wanted yeah. they wanted to see it back to the mature roots, and you know, thankfully they did. But I mean, then they really pushed the envelope in my in in a good way with the likes of uh, Freddy Krueger being involved. I mean, yeah. once I saw that, I was like, uh, you guys are. I don't have the money. I want this game now. And also, um, I mean, I would have. I, I want Hand them as a chief too. Yeah. Oh man, you know, I mean, it's like they. There are so many. They just keep dangling the carrot, and I'm just desperately trying to reach for it. But it's like, you know, I don't have any problems with Sonic being reboot if it's done. If they have a very clear idea on how to do it. You the know? Correct, yeah. I don't want to see the the what that happened before where they just try to throw like they try to put it out there and just see how we react. You know, I'm just hoping. They have a very clear idea what to do, but of course, like Ira says, we already have too many reboots. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, some storylines and are being so out uh, are being so big that it's becoming hard to follow. And more importantly, you already have like a lot of new characters that, you know, I want to be against. But it almost seems like for each new game that's being made, the um, yeah, the the way they always they it seems like they make it an obligation to have a new character, and it's like you already have a large enough roster, yeah. And of course, I think one of the major complaints with Sonic Colors is how they put Tails inside the storyline when he really didn't need to be there, because their storyline pretty much said that Sonic can just take care of this on his own. And I think that you know this is where you really need to reintroduce these characters if Sonic once again is because. To me, it's like if you're gonna make Sonic the major spotlight and have everyone be out there, it's so, like. Yeah. The, the one question I, I would have about that is if they're they're gonna reboot it in a new game, like, is it is the game gonna be like a platformer like the old Sonic was, or are they gonna go with another genre like? That's a very. Cause, I mean, because you know, one of the major complaints that people had before Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations was the gameplay. Yeah. I mean. I was all for the 3D gameplay, but then you had people talking about the 2D gameplay. And then, um, what was it? Well, I, I remember someone making oh, yeah. what some, happened? Someone made a comparison to uh, Mario and how he had a brilliant strategy of, 
instead of just relying on one aspect of their game, they approach both sides. Anyone that wants to have the old school gameplay can check out the new Super Mario Brothers game. You you can yeah. see that on the 3DS. You can see that on the Wii, on the Wii, on the upcoming Wii U. They it's like they and then you have the 3D games like Super Mario Galaxy that is also for the Wii. So yeah, people uh, people are still feeling nostalgic about like the old uh, gameplay and the new 3D. And I think they tried to mix that those two together when they released like Sonic Generations. Yeah. The 3D and uh, 2D. Get, uh, mixed together, like yeah, and it's like it's now they, they kind of have a more clear idea on how to approach the 3D part of the game, but the 2D part they seem to you know finally get back on track. So yeah. it'd be interesting to know how they will approach the reboot. But you know, like I said, there's like a lot of elements that you know they like I said before, there seriously needs to be a clear direction of where to go. Like get the blindfolds on, focus straight, and just be sure you know where you're going because. You know, if you start getting distracted by, oh, let's include this, let's include that. It's like, you can include as much as you want, but bottom line is just make sure you have a very clear direction of where you're going. Yeah. But like I say, you know, like, you know, I'm all for Sonic getting the spotlight again, but the problem is the other characters. You have a lot of other characters out yeah. there. Some people, There are fans of, other, of these other characters, like Knuckles and Shadow the Hedgehog, but... Like I said, you know, if the story, if right now Sonic's becoming the major spotlight, but they still want to use the other characters, to me, let me put it like this. I always feel, I'm always, uh, like I said earlier, I'm always okay with the idea of, you know, expanding on a storyline, adding more characters, you know, making them fit in the storyline and having a lot of, you know, interesting stuff happening. But at the same time, like I said, you got to make sure you have a very good story. Mm -hmm. You have a very, you have to know you have a, you the gameplay complements these new characters. Otherwise, they might feel like you know, uh, they might stick out like a sore thumb. And then it's like, you know, you make people once again feel like, why am I not playing Sonic the Hedgehog? It's like a movie. You yeah, know? you know, it's like if you if you have the main character and all of a sudden the main character disappears during the middle act. You know, it's hard to really, you know, like, I'm not trying to uh, single out certain movies because at least certain movies kind of bring up the character during the middle part. Like, they did, they find a balance for it. But some movies, they don't balance it that well and they just forget the main character and just stick with the other characters. It's like, you know, I, maybe there's some kind of, maybe it's what the uh, filmmakers intend. I don't know. But for me, it's like, it can always be a tricky thing when, you know, you're trying to, do, you know, have the star become. In the background, you know, like no, oh, there I go, there I go. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so. Anyway, though, I just uh, uh, gotta bring up some other news about about oh, Halo Four. Oh, like oh. another thing about Halo Four is that um, Halo yeah. Four uh, pirates are apparently facing like permanent expel Xbox Live Ouch. bans. So, like uh, Microsoft is reported reportedly issuing like permanent bans over legitimate uh, pre-release title play, which um, the yeah. studio 343 calls leak predict predictable and encourages users to exercise caution and to avoid spoilers so that gamers caught playing the pirated version of their new shooter Halo 4 will face like a permanent ban from Xbox Live in other words wait till the game comes out yeah if you want to go online if you value your time and your money and you want to continue playing games on your Xbox 360 wait till the game comes out you play an early version and they find out that's how they do yep I mean, I mean, like I said, this is their baby, you know. This is their big game that they want released, and they don't want to have everything get, you know. They yeah. don't want. It's like you're supposed to play it when it's released. Yeah, but or if yeah, release the beta. And, and one thing is, when it comes to Halo, which, uh, like you said, is Microsoft's baby. Um, yeah, they're really like more strict about that than they are about other games. Like, mm -hmm. if a if a game comes out that's for not not by Microsoft, then they and if, if uh, it's people are not playing that, then Microsoft may not. You won't. You'll probably face some type of punishment, but not like permanent ban. But when it comes to Halo, I mean, yeah, you gotta look out. I mean, that's their big blockbuster, you know. I mean, it's like you don't see uh, you don't see stuff like that happening to like the Batman movies, or well, maybe you do. But I mean, I'm pretty sure they have like ty uh, like uh, like even with the Avengers, you might you know you might think, oh well, uh, they might leak the script or something, and it's like I doubt that. I'm pretty sure they'll have those uh, bases covered because. You know, it's like I've seen in many uh, behind-the-scenes footage how a lot of the people say that, like even the actors, they say they had to sign disclaimers, multiple disclaimers, saying, "Okay, if we know, if someone knows something about the script, and it came from this script, 
then it seems like uh, we we know who to blame. <laughs> and so they want to make sure. Look, you know, we're not gonna make we're not gonna let anyone ruin this for anybody. Either you enjoy the game when it's released, or you just you know enjoy your five seconds of fun time before you're out the door. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, we got about, like, four minutes left, so right. I just want to say um, that there's this uh, new uh, game called Cyberpunk 27, which is made by the people who made Witcher 2. It's a new RPG open world game. 2077. Yeah, and uh, Rockstar Games is uh, uh, asking, like, uh, for feedback, like, asking uh, for feedback for Grand Theft Auto Five and uh, from fans, obviously, and so yeah. people who are interested, they can, like, go to the um, GameSpot website right here and click on the article that says Rockstar Acts... GTA 5 yeah. crews for, for feedback and then learn how you could uh, put put in like uh, what you think they should do to tweak the game to be even better. So That's a smart idea. I mean, you want to make sure your, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto 5, it's obviously going to be a big game, but yeah. I mean, it's not like you can just go on titles, you know? It's like, you can't just expect, I mean, it's like, sure, the name will sell, mm -hmm. but you really need to make sure you, you got to make sure you get the, uh, yeah. the game you know, like all the gameplay, you got to make sure you get all the nooks and crannies all set. So, yeah, so all right, yeah, we got to uh, wrap this up right now. So yeah, we'll uh, be back like next week on Tuesday with so some more news about the about what's happening in the gaming world. On IGN, we'll tell you more about that if IGN is going to be optioned off or not, and some more news that we can find on the website. So until then, we'll. Uh, this is Ira Ford, and uh, and this is DJ French. And then, DJ Vic in the house. And remember, uh, stay tuned for our uh, 